thanks uh, to Federica and to Marco to invite me to be here today with you. I'm uh, always uh, nice uh, to, to share experience with a uh, new researcher. I move uh, my first uh, uh, experience in the psychometry lab as a researcher and then uh, become uh, my, my topics in my, my jobs. And uh, today I introduce you the very first uh, topics about instrument setting and compensation. We start uh, from a consideration. Any flow cytometry experiment consists of three very important tools. They are a good sample preparation, a proper instrument setting, and a careful multicolor multi panel design. Only any sorry, of these uh, tools are very important and contribute to a successful experiment. Without uh, any of things, a poor sample preparation, for example, my cells are dyed. Can you understand that, that your experiment is not uh, can be successful. The instrument setting is not proper. What I mean, for example, pressure, for example, voltage, for example, compensation are not optimal. I can see what I want. So the right combination, the best combination, is to validate any of these components. Actually, Flow cytometry receive a great impulse to increase the number of color we can manage. So 20 years ago, when flow cytometry moved the first step, we are used to work with uh, two, three, four color. Actually, we are rich 50 colors. So we can imagine the complexity and the careful we have to pay also in design our experiment. So many times the general approach is, okay, I look at <coughs> what I have in the frigo and put together. Moving towards uh, the multicolor wide scenario, this approach is not successful. My suggestion, moving by way by way is to think before your experiment, design your panel uh, using, uh, sorry, using, uh, asking help from some people like me that uh, works for BD or for other, other farms that uh, have this figure to have a suggestion about the best combination. Anyway, I don't want to divagate more. Today I introduce you the, some rules for the instrument setting. First, another tool that often people lost in their mind. I have to check the performance of my instrument. Any instrument today has in a its tool, a module, a software to check the instrument performance. For example, BD instrument have GSNT module, is the acronym for cytometer setup and tracking, and its function is define and characterize baseline performance, optimize and standard the standardized cytometer setup, and finally track cytometer performance. Why I want to underline this tool? Because in experiment, we have two components, the biology and the instrument. If the instrument performs well, you are sure that the variability is a contribute of the biology of your cells. And as you know, biology is big, big, big variation. Also for scatter, sometimes my cells are big, 
sometimes my cells are smaller, sometimes my cells are dead. So I want to exclude as first um, artifact the contribution of the instrument. Then, when I check that my main instrument is okay, what uh, I need to uh, set up my instrument? Uh, any experiment requires two main steps. The first is uh, the choice of DMT voltage, both for scattering signals and for fluorescence. Then, uh, if I work in a multicolor scenario, I have to consider spectral overlap calculate compensation. We start considering the first part of our setting. What I need, what I prefer. Many times when you have a facility that supports you in your experiment, Okay, you go to the facility, bring your, put your tube in the hands of your colleague, and is ask you more. I need unstained cells. I need single stained control to calculate compensation. Suggested and strongly recommended from me, but not obligatory. I have also a multicolor stain sample as control. For example, if I want to see a protein that upregulated after this, uh, uh, a stimulus, I have a positive control to check that uh, my staining is okay. Because without, uh, I can say if uh, the setting is good or if the missing signal is a biological uh, contribute. Well, we starting <coughs> setting PMT voltage for uh, scattering. As Marco introduced you, we have two signals of scattering, the so-called forward and side scatter. The forward uh, give us information about relative size and the side scatter about the internally complex of the cells. So if we look at this very new uh, plot, this is a, a sample of human peripheral blood preparated in a light and wash method. And I want to regulate the forward and the side scatter in order to see lymphocytes monocytes and granulocytes. The first one is the smallest. Lymphocytes are smaller, very simple, not, don't, they don't have uh, uh, org organs inside and so on. And I want to identify them very well to can draw a gate. A gate is a region that can individuate a population of our interest. This is the first part. The question about the threshold. Keep, uh, keep attention, because the threshold, in this case, uh, more or less is higher, before, um, higher than uh, Marco showed in, uh, in uh, his, uh, his plot. But remember that if uh, I cut uh, my events, I have lost them. So when you are in doubt, I don't know, are debris, are cells, maybe I can uh, analyze them uh, in different way. You put uh, the threshold on lower, um, on lower value. In analysis, you can always remove what you don't uh, want to analyze. But if you don't record, you have lost it. You have lost them. OK. When we move to the autofluorescence and the regulation of uh, the PMT voltage for fluorescence parameter, again, the general rule 
give us uh, an indication. You have to regulate PMT voltage in order that unstained cells appear in the first part of your graph. This is a very general rule. Actually, it's not so, uh, so, uh, um, hmm. so true. Sorry, for, I, I don't miss the uh, word in English, but why? Because as we, we say before, this rule starts considering only the negative population. The next consideration is, okay, I set the fluorescence and the PMT voltage in this way. After I check that my positive signal is inside the scale, why? Because if my positive is here, review, say you, okay, I don't, I don't believe your data. <laughs> are, you, are you agree? And on the other end, this is a, uh, sorry, a, uh, a representation of a sample before I show you. And for uh, six uh, very common uh, dyes, the histogram for FITSI, PE, PRCP, PCY7, APC, APC, CY7. So in general, I start, in, uh, I start uh, regulating voltage in order to have this image. But uh, actually, the polychromatic uh, flow cytometry uh, propose different way to individuate the optimal voltage. Today, I don't want to uh, introduce uh, these topics, but I want to leave you some reference uh, that you can read and uh, explore because it's very complicated. But in this page, uh, I report you two different methods. One is method from the school of Stephen Perfetto. You know Stephen Perfetto is a very no opinion leader in flow cytometry. And he and his colleague propose a method to set up the instrument searching for the optimal voltage for the PMT using different type of bits. On the other side of the slide, I report some internal BD uh, technical document that introduce the use of a standard deviation of electronic noise of the instrument as the beginning to research the right voltage. So as you imagine, it's not so easy. So consider that we start today I don't want to input uh, a lot of mathematical uh, uh, expression, but uh, I like uh, to, to, to give you some indication because today we can't forget this. And when you come back to home and uh, uh, you approach your experiment, we have to a full scenario. Then, one time, we have, uh, once we have uh, choose the voltage, the right voltage, mm -hmm. probably. The next step is determining the, the degree of spectral overlap and calculate compensation for the set of fluorochrome I choose. Uh, compensation, what is it? For uh, people that have uh, already experienced in flow cytometry, know that the compensation is love and date of any flow cytometry people. And the question is, uh, is too much, is too low, which is uh, the side of a coin that I have to move. So it's a very trouble in any experiment. But uh, we're starting uh, from the definition is a mathematical correction 
of a signal overlap between the channel of emission spectra of different fluorochrome. So it's a correction, it's a calculation, it's not something that the instrument measures directly. What is it? Uh, why we have to compensate? Before we, we, we see together some emission spectra, I'll, see you, I'll show you to, again. Uh, consider that uh, any fluorochrome has a proper emission spectrum. So in general, what you have to know about re the reagent you use, uh, not only the name, but the spectra. The, the first consideration you have to, to keep in mind, okay, I have a new dye. Is it suitable for my instrument or not? So I have to know the absorption spectra to have efficient ex excitation, sorry. And also to know the emission because I have to verify that my instrument can collect and discriminate that. As you see, spectra, spectra are not lines, but are curved, and they are near each other. So if I consider this area in the spectra viewer, I see the spectra of FITSI and PE, and a part of PCY7, and uh, it's easy to individuate that these spectra are overlapping with each other. Our optical system, in general, in any instrument, is uh, developed and designed using band filters to collect mostly the fluorescence, mostly of the fluorescence from a specific dye. Consider, for example, these uh, windows. This is a typical band filter for, to collect PE. It's a 585 uh, slash 40, more or less. But it's easy that uh, these windows don't, doesn't collect only PE fluorescence, but it receives a contribute of the uh, FITSI, of PCY7, and maybe also from other uh, dyes. The, if I consider, for example, a sample stain only with a Fitzy reagent, can you imagine is a CD8? So the usual sample I refer is a sample as a blood, peripheral blood. I stain the with the antibody anti-CD8, conjugated to FITSI, and when I run my sample and visualize the sample in a dot plot using FITSI versus P, FITSI versus P per CP, I see two false double positive. Why? Because the spectral FITSI of FITSI overlap in the window of PE and in a um, smaller uh, part in the window of per CP. What we have to do? We have to compensate, so we have to subtract the fluorescence of Fitzy of Fitzy from Fitzy falls in the other channel to bring the green population in this part of the graph. Pay attention, I subtract Fitzy. So the line we have to correct in the first case is P minus PC, and in the second case, per CP minus PC. Consider that also PE produce overlap in the PC window. So 
Do you remember my slide with the monkey, which is the choice? P minus P, minus P or P minus P. But if we understand, it's easy. If we, uh, bring the coins, it's always a, a lucky, a lucky choice. Then, come, come in back, we have to increase the value of spectral overlap and to, to obtain two populations that are alienated in P fluorescence. They are both negative. My population in this example are discriminated only for the fluorescence due to Fizzi, not for the other dyes. I have, it's important to have a correct balance of this compensation. Why? Because if it's undercompensated, if you consider, for example, the mean fluorescence intensity, you introduce an artifact in your valuation. Because maybe you are following the upregulation of a marker after stimulation and uh, in untreated or time zero, your MFI is uh, 100. In the second point uh, is 150, but the difference between 100 and 150 is real or is due to uh, undercompensation. On the other hand, uh, also, overcompensation introduces an artifact. Uh, when you look at uh, the, the population in the plot, also the, the shape of the, of the population uh, say you if a compensate is not, a, no, is, a, is good or not. Uh, I don't introduce a graph in this way, but when you look uh, for data uncompensated, the shape of the population are oval. When you look for data comp compensated data, in general, the shape of, uh, of the of population is round. Flow cytometry is an application where the operator and the visualization of the data is very important. So, don't scare if beginning, don't recognize, or uh, okay, I, 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 be, I begin to, mm, to become confident with uh, these uh, topics. Then, is an example, look, that uh, when I say brown population, <coughs> is the same uh, sample stained with a CD4 uh, conjugate to Fizzi is a visualization of using an histogram so it have a negative and a positive population look that negative and positive population have a different median value for CD4 in Fizzi but they have more or less the same median in the other channel if I want to be very, very accurate, this is the windows, the statistical value that gives me if I'm working well or not. Actually, in the instrument, you can find a lot of automatism or semi-automatism can help you because you image, I show you five channels, but if you work with eight, 10, or more channel uh, to set manually the compensation is very time consuming. And in this way, we don't want to, um, to waste our time in the heart of voltage 
but we want to concentrate in our experiment. So the automatism is very useful, but the main responsibility of the choice is of the operator. We have to individuate the right voltage and after we can we, we can be able to individuate and not compensate the data. So what we need to uh, calculate compensation in the previous slides uh, I introduced that we need uh, some single state control, in particular one for any color I used. And uh, we can use cells if we have, for example, for researchers that work with microbiology and bacteria, they have a lot of cells. If you work uh, with uh, medicine and uh, biology, and you receive a small sample from, for example, pediatric uh, uh, donor, you can waste your sample to perform control for compensation. But uh, we can use uh, beads. There are different types of beads uh, in, uh, in, uh, in use. BD comp beads are beads that uh, are of a potential to bind the antibody and to recognize them without using the specific specificity. They recognize the antibody through the constant part of uh, FC receptor. Uh, what we have to keep in mind uh, when I uh, prepare my set of control it's not uh, uh, strictly needed, necessary, using the same antigen that we use in uh, our final panel. So if you look in this case, uh, it's a very simple panel for TREG in human. CD3, CD25, CD127 uh, and CD4. In this setting, CD3 and CD4 are very good also to compensate if I want to use cells. But if I use CD25, it's hard because, because I have to collect a large number of cells to have positive cells. And this marker is a so-called tertiary antigen. What I mean? This is, uh, uh, it, have, it has uh, heterogeneous expression and a low expression in some type of cells. So using this, uh, I can see this situation. I can see very, very few maybe dots in this area and I can't visualize uh, the correct distribution of my, of my population. Uh, so, remember this general rule, I can use cells if I have, and if I have markers that uh, are suitable for compensation. In general, I want to use markers that are lineage markers, so very high expressive marker, or alternative choice to use the beads. The beads are a good solution when I don't have cells, and when my markers are not so clear to compensate, uh, to use for compensation. Uh, final consideration. The final setting has to be verified and validated with a full stained sample. This is the, point, the start point. If I want to see a signal, the molecule are to be present, uh, has to be present. Uh, and uh, when I set a protocol, if I have positive and negative control, uh, is always a good uh, point of validation. Uh, many times when people uh, approach the flow cytometry, don't consider the work 
behind the results. Uh, you, well, uh, I'd like to put you a suggestion. It's not only bring the cells and put under the flow cytometry, but you think your experiment also in biology environment, but also in the instrument. This approach prevents you to waste your time and your results. Okay, and finally, it could, it, this could be a result and we want to approach and arrive to this. I, for example, if I, this is a, a general panel for T cells and some subset of T cells, CD3, live and dead, I want to exclude dead cells, for example, and in this case I use an approach using a dye, not morphological features of cells, CD3, CD8, to individuate cytotoxic T lymphocytes. Inside this, I want to see the different subset of population, for example, it's different this pattern if you use um, peripheral blood as, um, such as, or if you have PBNC, frozen PBNC, stimulated PBNC, and uh, other type of sample. In, the, in, in, this, in this sense, I suggest you to have the right control when you perform uh, the, the first experiment. And the other and, and the other uh, other plot. Okay, I hope to have you. Uh, I give you an idea what you need to uh, to set up your uh, your um, your experiment at the instrument. Tomorrow we talk together about the multicolor panel design and some rule to keep in mind. Uh, in a more complex scenario, but uh, I think that uh, it can be useful for you. And if you have questions, I'm here. Okay, and this is my contact. I work uh, as application specialist in Italy, but we do have uh, similar people in every country in uh, world, worldwide. So I can give you the contact for your region if you need.